Daniels, he's going to keep. He's going to walk into the end zone. Oh. Uh, here comes one to the cup. Woo! Left hand layup good. Kansas is the 2023 WNIT champions. This is the Jayhawker Podcast, presented by the University of Kansas Health System. Welcome back to another edition of the Jayhawker Podcast, brought to you by the University of Kansas Health System. I am Greg Gurley, along with Southsider, retired Jersey, Wayne Simeon, and our newest Jayhawk, Hunter Dickinson. Hunter, welcome to Lawrence. Welcome to the podcast. We're pumped to have you. Uh, Thanks for having me. So, uh, the most sought after transfer in the country, uh, decided to come to Kansas after a about a month of kind of yeah. going, not really back and forth, just evaluating the whole landscape. Give us an idea of the uh, process. I, I know you, you didn't reluctantly leave Michigan because you knew you wanted to take the next step, yeah. but there was definitely more that you wanted to accomplish. So kind of, number one, welcome. And then number two, kind of talk about that process and how all the other schools uh, uh you know, contested for you, really tried to get you, and then what was the difference in the end? Yeah, no, um, like, you, like you said, the, the decision to leave Michigan was super tough. Um, really didn't want to leave, but, you know, like you said, I feel like this was the best, um, you know, situation for me. I feel like I, I needed something new. And once I entered the portal, um, my phone was blowing up like crazy, but I, I called it like speed dating on steroids. Like everybody – kind of knew that, you know, they had to try to make their pitches um, early because, you know, the transfer portal, you only have a you know certain amount of time. It's not like high school where you have years of um, kind of recruitment and stuff like that. So they knew that, you know, they try to they try to get you the commitment as fast as possible. So um, it was extremely stressful for me, um, especially with the amount of schools that were reaching out. And you think about it, you're an East Coast guy from the, the D.C. area. When you were being recruited out of high school, was Kansas even in the mix? Now, Kansas came to a game, but um, they never really, like, recruited me too hard, I'd say. So it was kind of unique how um, coming in the portal, I knew that was one of the schools that I wanted to reach out to me because of, you know, the success that they had, not only as a team, but with big men as well. Um, and so I felt like I knew this would be, you know, one of the good spots that um, I'd be interested in. Yeah, just here being on campus, going through the whirlwind that was uh, the the portal recruiting experience, uh, getting here, what are you looking forward to the most now that you have boots on the ground in Lawrence, Kansas? Man, um, I'm so excited for that, for uh, Night in the Fog. I can't wait for that, just to be um, amongst, you know, all the fans with a packed uh, Allen Fieldhouse. I can't wait for that. That's, that's first, and then the first game right after that. I can't wait for those two experiences. Um, because everybody's been talking to me about how special uh, the field house is, and I, I can already kind of get a sense for how crazy it is just looking at the looking at the gym and stuff like that. But um, I really can't wait uh, just to be out there with the fans. Yeah, and we've already had uh, a couple of experiences uh, that are before that. Uh, I think maybe you guys have had maybe two or three practices, mm-hmm. got a chance to scrimmage in front of the campers uh, yesterday. So what was it like being on the court with your new teammates? Coach Self's been around and been involved, and then, of course, uh, the trip to Puerto Rico is is going to be yeah. right there on the horizon, too. And so tell us a little bit about those experiences. It's been super fun um, just getting to know the guys, like a whole a whole new team. Um, it's been a super fun experience just getting to know them and kind of bond with them. Uh, playing in front of the, the campers is, was real fun. Uh, it was good for a couple of minutes, but I feel like it got a little sloppy after um, a couple of minutes because I think, you know, we still got to get a little bit better condition. And usually pickup games like that don't lend well for a big guy because, yeah. you know, everyone else is jacking threes and dribbling between their legs and all that stuff. So Especially when you don't really have a sub. Um, so, you know, it gets a little bit tough, but you're super happy um, to be with the team. I'm super excited to meet the new guys that still haven't gotten here yet, uh, still weighing on uh, Marcus, Kevin, and Parker. And so um, just super excited. Can't wait, to, can't, can't wait to meet them. But I think, you know, we'll have a really good team this year. How about this community? Uh, you mentioned several times during the recruitment and then after you made your decision, you're like, I'm walking around Lawrence and people know who I am. Yeah. And, and was, did that not happen a lot at Michigan? You're kind of hard to hide. I would think walking down campus, they know, and they know who you are, but what are the differences between Ann Arbor and Lawrence in your short time already here? 
Um, I mean, yeah, in, in, our, in Ann Arbor, they definitely knew who I was. Um, it, it was pretty hard to walk around without getting noticed. Um, I feel like Ann Arbor was, you know, more of a more of a kind of city like. I think Lawrence is a little bit more laid back um, and just real slow paced, and I kind of like that, uh, especially in the summer. I know when students get back, there will be a little bit more craziness and a little more, um, you know, just more stuff to do and stuff like that. But I kind of I kind of like the laid back feel that I've gotten from Lawrence. Uh, it is crazy because yeah, no, like I'm walking around and people know who I am, and I haven't really scored a basket yet, uh, but. Um, it's been real fun. You know, it's fun for people to notice who you are. I did a little research, watched your podcast with your, your partners, Marty Mush. Yeah. Mush, what is it? Mush. Yeah, Mush. Mush, my bad. Sorry, Marty. Uh, and Jordan Bohannon played at Iowa. And the thing that struck me from Jordan Bohannon and Marty was they were kind of throwing a little shade at Kansas. And I'm like, I had to look, you know, Jordan Bohannon's from Iowa. <laughs> and, he's, and he goes, what is it? No one's ever said I'm excited about going to Kansas. But – I, I, I'm interested. They said they do want to come to a game here, which I'll be happy to host them, and Wayne and I will show them the town. So please tell them that Lawrence, Kansas, and Kansas City, let's, that's not, it's not even comparable to Iowa. It's a, well, it's a big city. Well, when you're, when you're the one in this program in NCAA Thank history with, with six national championships, a lot of people uh, want to take shots. A lot of people want to, want to bring you down, but you, know, you just got to be better than that. You know, yeah. when, when, you're, when you're the best of the best – uh, it always comes with that territory. Love it. Yeah, you, you've played in uh, one of the top conferences uh, in college basketball, the Big Ten. Uh, and we've got some Big Ten opponents that are yeah. actually on the schedule. Yeah. There's a strong likelihood that we could run into Purdue uh, that someone you face against uh, several times. And, and of course, uh, they're, they're All-American there at the center, yeah. Zach Eady, And then uh, going to, to Bloomington to play at Indiana. So as you think about the potential of running into those uh, Big Ten uh, opponents that you're very familiar with. Yeah. What are some of your thoughts uh, about that? You're probably going to have to play a more leading role in being familiar with them and helping helping the Jayhawks come to victory. Yeah, I, I might have to be the the, the lead scout on, on, on those <laughs> scouts. Um, it'll be super fun. I'm super excited. Hopefully we do get to play Purdue because, you know, it's always fun going against uh, Zach. He's obviously a great player. Um, he won player of the year. So He's the only guy bigger than you you've ever played. No, I played um, at NBA Top 100 camp. There was a kid named Matt Van Sulkum. He was like 7'4", too, so he was, it was, I think he was like the second guy. But, I mean, that will be really fun to play against him um, if we get that opportunity. But super glad that we have a definite matchup versus Indiana because going to Bloomington is always super fun. Uh, they get one of the best atmospheres uh, in the country, and they'll have a pretty good team. Uh, and so that will be a really fun matchup. And, Hopefully we can get a couple wins against the Big Ten, so I can get the uh, get get a little, um, I guess, uh, say over them. Yeah, yeah, right on. What did, what did you think about the? Uh, have you had a chance to really evaluate and dissect our schedule? We always have one of the toughest schedules in the country. We got uh, Puerto Rico, which you mentioned, which I think is the timing of this with only three guys back. Yeah. The camaraderie, the travel together, eight days in Puerto Rico. The games will be great, but the extra practices. And then the three games against men. We're not we're not playing against yeah. Yeah. high schoolers. <laughs> we're playing against pros, professional Olymp men, Olympians, Olympians. And and I think you just can't measure that. I think it's it's huge timing wise. Again, for you to get to know your teammates, which we're already here in June yeah. and July, but going on the road is different. You know, you're there's going to probably be a hundred of us in Puerto Rico, kind of a man on an island type of deal, and, and in your own little bubble. So Puerto Rico will be great. Uh, Wayne mentioned we play at Indiana, uh, we play Missouri at home, Connecticut at home, the defending national champs, and then the Maui field. Did you ever play in Maui? No, nope, no, nope, never played it's in Maui. The best holiday tournament, you're going to love it. Uh, hardest field I've ever seen Tennessee, Purdue, Gonzaga, I think UCLA, UCLA Marquette, Marquette, Marquette mm -hmm. who's going to be a preseason top five, I think. So there were preseason number one until the big fella came. <laughs> that's came right. Yeah. But how about this schedule? I mean, you know, that's why, you know, a, a person like me comes to Kansas. I want to play against the best. Um, if you want to play against the best, you got to be the best. And so um, you come to a place like Kansas where you're playing in the Big 12 with, you know, one of the hardest conferences in the country. And everybody wants to put Kansas on their schedule um, so they can try to get that win on their resume. But I'm super excited for the opportunity. Um, I've always felt like I've went places to play, play the best, and so now I, I get the opportunity at Kansas. And from an outsider looking in, watching your career, 
I think you kind of like it to go play on the road and people yelling and screaming, throwing stuff. You kind of, do you have a little bit of an edge and you, do you almost like road games in Indiana better? Yeah. Um, I, I, I tend to agree with that, especially, um, I'm not used to having, you know, the field house, uh, as my home arena. So, you know, sometimes the home games, you know, aren't as fun as the away games for me. I think just the away games, having that sense of everybody against you, it's right. just you and your guys there yeah. and kind of overcoming that, um, is something really special and something that I really like and, and enjoy. Now, top to bottom, you're one of the most skilled bigs uh, that we've had here in the program who can do a little bit of everything, can play with your back to the basket in the interior, uh, have the ability to knock down mid-range. But the lethal lefties, we got a chance to see uh, yesterday in the camp game, have uh, the ability and the confidence to step out behind the three-point arc and knock down a shot. How do you choose, like, what is your go-to if someone, when someone that has so many weapons like you? Yeah, no, that's an interesting uh, question. Um, I think, you know, I'll, I'll always know that my bread is buttered down low um, with my post game. Um, but just being able to step out and be more dangerous and, and affect the game in different ways um, is something that I've always tried to do and always something that I felt like I've had in my game. Um, it's kind of just something where it, it makes me more versatile, um, being able to help coach self just, you know, put me in different positions so I can help impact the team in different ways. And speaking of, of how you impact the game, I mean, I, I look at it, especially as a guard, like I'd love to play on this team because you're going to get – when you start rolling underneath, they're going to have to double. Yeah. And if you're Nick Timberlake, you're Kevin McCullough, you're Dewan, you're whoever, you're going to get a ton of open looks. And you're a very adept passer, and I know you've mentioned several times about how important it was to have a great point guard like Dewan and watching from afar, you said – I mean, is he, the, is he the guy you're most excited to play with? Yeah, no, I said that on another – when I was getting interviewed by uh, the local media, they, they gave me a player. And usually, you know, guys would just say, like, the whole team, like, I'm excited to play with her. But Dewan definitely somebody that I'm excited to play with. He definitely had an impact on my decision knowing that, you know, he's going to be my point guard and somebody that, you know, just loves the pass. And don't expect bounce passes, expect lobs. Yeah, I know, I know. We were talking about that. Go get lobs, that. Go get lobs. that. No, we, we've had a lot of conversations about, you know, how, how we're going to play together, and I'm just so excited. Uh, but, you know, I told him and I told the other guys, like, yeah, you're going to get so many open shots with me because, like, last year there was only, I think, one team that, that didn't double team me. So I feel like, you know, these guys will get a lot of open shots, and um, I'm excited to see them be able just to knock down Know, they're open shots. And I, I think the other guy that's really going to excel, even though he had a great year last year, was, is KJ. Yeah. Because KJ was our primary post player last year. Didn't really get double teamed. Had a great year. But now it's going to kind of switch. And his ability to run to the rim and your ability to pass, I think KJ is going to flourish. Yeah. And no, I told KJ once I commit, I said, don't worry. You won't have to guard uh, fives yeah. anymore. I <laughs> six, I, I, seven, I'll take yeah. him. I'll take him. Don't worry. Hey, and thinking about how the, the game of basketball has evolved, it's almost kind of a, a faux pas to be considered like a traditional big. But it seems like you really embrace it. And the, the timing is great because when you think about the top players in the NBA the last three years have been true centers. Joker, who we're watching right now in the NBA Finals, but then also a guy who played here at Kansas that Coach Self helped develop, yeah. the reigning MVP, Joel Embiid. And so as you think about embracing – the identity of being a true center, a true big, coupled with Coach Self and his ability to develop the bigs, like how excited do you get about that? Yeah, no, I'm super excited. I think, you know, that emphasis of, you know, trying to play further on the perimeter for a lot of bigs kind of helped me in a sense where, you know, a lot of guys aren't getting taught, you know, the fundamentals of back to the basket game and, and hook shots and stuff like that. And so a guy like me who um, I feel like I'm really skilled in that area and really efficient um, in the post with my back to the basket, I think that makes me, you know, I think that separates me from a lot of the people and it can make you really um, effective. Like you're seeing Jokic out there um, playing with back to the basket, being able to do a lot of different things uh, because a lot of guys don't teach it nowadays. And so super excited to learn from Coach Self. Um, you know, he's one of the best, not currently, but all time. And so um, I'm super excited to get to learn from him and the rest of the staff and try to you know, even add on to my game as well. I'm over here getting emotional, man, because we, you know, true bigs are so far between. <laughs> He's talking about jump hooks. I get excited <laughs> about jump hooks, man. I get excited about rebounds. Like have, the you traditional watched, stuff. have you watched any tape on, uh, uh, 
Udoka or Landon Lucas or Thomas Robinson, how within our offense, how Bill isolates bigs on that block, throw it to the corner of the backboard late in. I mean, it, it, you should shoot 75% with your skills and the ability to bring people out on the perimeter, pick and pop guy, I think. I, I think the rest of the Big 12 and the rest of the country is like, <laughs> oh, now they got a guy. <laughs> yeah. Now they got a dude, right? Yeah, no, 75% is certainly the goal uh, okay, from the good. field. Uh, but, you yeah, know, I definitely have watched Kansas throughout the years. Um, I mean, obviously playing in the Champions Classic and, and being a blue blood, you're, they're always on TV. But, I mean, Thomas Robinson was from my area. Um, the Morris Twins, watching them. Um, yeah, Udoka, even Joel. Um, I remember Jeff Withy even and Cole Aldridge yeah. and those guys. I mean, I've definitely watched um, throughout the years Kansas basketball. Um, I've always known about them. Never really thought that I'd see myself at Kansas, yeah. honestly. Like, growing up, I'd always be like, man, like, who would want to go to, like, Kansas when you can go to, like, Duke or North Carolina? But, you know, really, as I matured and kind of, especially on the visit and stuff like that, I mean, it's easy to see why somebody would pick Kansas with just the community, facilities, uh, you know, the coaching staff, the people here. I want you to talk a little bit about that, uh, the facilities, where you live, like compared to where you're at. Now you've come here and when Wayne and I work in development and we, we're, in, we're engaged in this every day and it's cool for us to see it pay off when you say, hey, McCarthy Hall is the nicest residential hall you've ever been to, right? Because it's built yeah. for you. Nine foot door jams, shower heads, yeah. nine foot. I mean, you don't have to duck like most of us in a hotel. You know, it's it's made for big people, right? I I think McCarthy Hall sold sold it for my mom on the visit. I really? think I think she saw the nine foot doorways, the the tallest things, and was like, Hunter. How tall is your mom? She's like six one. Yeah, yeah, but I, she was like, Hunter, I think you I think you'd be dumb if you if you didn't come here because of because <laughs> of the nine foot doorways, the tall showers, and all that. So. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I think Kansas was, was built for guys like me yeah. uh, to come here and, and have a place where they can feel comfortable. Well, what we tried to do was if, if truly you're comparing apples to apples with Carolina or Duke or whatever, and something like that could put it over the top, it did its job. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think that's just an added bonus of, of coming to a place like Kansas. I mean, obviously, first and foremost is the basketball. Right. You know, that's why I, I picked it was because – I want to come here and try to win a national championship under one of the best coaches of all time. But uh, having McCarthy Hall there um, right next to the gym, having the gym, the, the field house uh, be your home arena, I mean, right. those are things that, you know, you really, can't, um, you, know, you really can't substitute. How about some of the noise throughout the last month? I, again, I watched your podcast, and it was amazing to you and your host. Everybody thought they knew what you were going to do. And it's, I want this to be a good platform to tell people, like, when you were making your decision about what three people really knew it yeah. and anybody that said they knew it, it was just full of it. I mean, at, and, and everybody's got a great source and everybody's barber whose buddy's a mailman, whose sister cuts his hair. Like it's just, it's you and yeah. your parents and maybe a few of your inner circle and anybody that says they know better. Yeah. It was kind of like when, how many times we get calls when Bill had his health scare that he was going to retire. Right. Yeah. And we're like, shut up. You're basically hang up the phone, right? Yeah, I mean, even with that situation, like Bill, Bill said, he like, man, it, it motivated me even more to get out there right. and coach uh, because it, I guess he really missed it. But, um, yeah, during the recruiting process, I think uh, just going through it in high school um, because, you know, everybody wants to be a source. Everybody um, wants to be out there and, and have the scoop. inside scoop. Yeah. And so, like, whoever you tell is going to tell somebody else and they're going to tell – and it's going to get out there. Um, the moles in college basketball recruiting are impressive nowadays of how good they're getting. Um, and I, I kind of knew that, and I really wanted to keep my re recruitment to myself. And so that's why, yeah, it was between really me and my two parents. Um, you know, I, I didn't even tell my brothers where I was going until about, like, 30 minutes before. Yeah. And so, like, I, yeah, every rumor that came out there, um, just every little thing was just so funny to me because it was like – Everybody almost kind of got mad because they didn't know. Like it was like yeah. it was like a new a new thing that they'd never experienced before, and, and so it felt like the country was all mad at me because they're like, I'm like, don't get mad at me because your source is wrong. Like I didn't tell them that, <laughs> and so um, it was super fun just to kind of have my own recruitment and, and kind of keep them mysterious because I, I feel like a, a lot of days now um, kids' recruitments can kind of get spoiled um, by inside, you know, people like that, and because they always want be first and, and kind of get that 
um, recognition. So I, I, I enjoyed being able to kind of keep mine on the down low as much as I could. Yeah, it's great that you've uh, highlighted your mom here these last couple of answers. Tell us a little bit more about your family dynamic, your brothers, and how excited they are about this opportunity and, and the role that they had in, uh, in helping develop you into the man, the basketball player you are today. Yeah, so I got obviously my two parents um, and, and my three brothers. Uh, my middle, so out of the three, the middle one, Ben, is probably the one that kind of got me into basketball. Um, you know, he, he probably um, was the one that yeah, got me into it because I wanted to be like him growing up. So, How big are they? Um, the oldest, oldest one is like 6'6", six, six, but then the two other ones are 6'10 and 6'9". Oh, wow. So we're, yeah, and then my dad's 6'6", six, six, my mom's 6'1", six, so we're all kind of pretty big. Um, but, yeah, no, Ben, I'd say, really got me into basketball because um, I wanted to be like him growing up. And then Grant played about every sport imaginable. Um, he was a really good hockey player, and he shot up to about 6'9", six, 6'10", six, and he was boxing, he was playing tennis, he was literally doing everything. He picked up Jeez. basketball his junior year, so he, um, he only played for about like two years and then was able to go Division two uh, for his career. But um, my dad played baseball in college, my mom played volleyball, and so I feel like, you know, we got a pretty good sporting Blood family. Yeah. So you might not be the best athlete in the family. Oh, no, 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 I'm, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm the best athlete. <laughs> but I got other good athletes alongside me. For sure. The Dickinsons <laughs> kind of rival the Pollards as far as size of the overall. Well, yeah, what's, the, what's their breakdown? Scott, Scotty's the smallest of five boys, and he's 6'11", whatever. And he's got – that's a big family. Yeah. Be a, we'll get some family pictures together. <laughs> Pollards and the Dickinsons. That would be fun. Your folks, I know you, you, you're, you've only been here for six days, but yeah. came on your visit, and, and obviously have kind of already got some favorites around town. I saw you at dinner the other night at your, your new favorite place, which is also mine, 715. Yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend a lot of money there, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, they could, well, because I'm a big fan of Alavaca pasta, and they got, you know, one. not only do they have it, but it's really good. So, yeah. you know, shout out to them. There you go. So obviously you're here to win championships, you're here to work, you're here to develop, you're here to get a great education, but what are some things you like to do in your free time and, and, and how can uh, the, the local area here in Lawrence help facilitate that? I mean, it, it's, it's kind of hard because, you know, especially being a student athlete, you don't have too much time on your hands. I mean, I feel like you know this because you went through it, but, um, you know, outside of academics and, and basketball, you only have a couple hours, and so I, I'm, I'm a big gamer because it gives me a chance to kind of just sit down and relax and and play with either my teammates or, you know, I'll play with my brothers and stuff like that. So I'll be able to kind of um, use that as, like, bonding time with them. But yeah. What consoles, what games are you on right now? Uh, PlayStation 5. Um, right now I'm heavy on Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, you always was a big Call of Duty fan, but I feel like, you know, they, they got to step it up right now. So You want to throw your username out there and take on any challenges nah, nah, right nah, now? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I'm not throwing out the username out here. But, <laughs> no, nah, I, I, do, I do enjoy that because it kind of gives me a chance to kind of – you know, when I enter that, I'm kind of, like you said, my gamer tag. I'm not Hunter Dickinson. I can just be another face out there in the universe, and so I kind of enjoy that. Um, so the Big 12, how much familiarity do you have with the Big 12? You're, you're a sports guy. Like when you're yeah. at Michigan, you're watching games on off nights, right? Yeah. And so you look at this league, and it's kind of, you know, Big 10 guy. But last year, all everybody talked about was how good the Big 12 was. We weren't able to get a team in the Final Four. But – what was your view of the Big 12 coming from another Power 5 conference? Yeah, I think the Big 12 always rivaled um, the Big 10, you know, with the competitiveness. Um, you know, I feel like there's strong rivalries and, and just strong competitive nature within uh, the, the fan bases, I can tell for sure. Um, but, it, I mean, it's obviously, I think, now probably the best conference. I think um, it's overtaken the Big 10, not just, not just my bias, but right. I think last year I would have said the Big 10 because I definitely had bias, but... Um, if I'm being unbiased, I think the Big 12 is probably the best conference, just top to bottom. I mean, you got so many good teams with so many good coaches um, that it'll be super fun, and I can't wait to play in it. I know a lot of teams like to get out and run, and um, I think Kansas will do a good job of that as well. I think you know we're, we're poised to be able to attack you in multiple um, ways, and so I'm just super excited to go out there and compete against um, what I feel like is the best conference in the country. Talk to your parents and, and to some of your people in your circle, and they talked about how much you really want to get ingrained in the community and do stuff. Kind of talk about what some of your passions are and, and just what you'd like to – you know the basketball side, and we know the degree side, but, but what, what do you want to be as Hunter Dickinson? What do you want to be known for 
here in Lawrence? I feel like just, you know, a, a guy that, you know, was out in the community and kind of um, affected it in a good way. Um, just not somebody who was to themselves and kind of wanted to be away from, of, you know, away from the community of Lawrence. I feel like I'm a pretty cool person. I feel like I'm, I'm pretty open uh, to people. And, and once people uh, see that side of me, um, of just opening it up and, and being a part of the community, that's something that I feel like I was at Michigan. I feel like in an arbor, um, I always try to get out in the community and kind of show my face and let people kind of see me and not um, kind of try to hide myself. And so that's what I'm going to try to do out here in Lawrence is try to, you know, be be seen by the people as much as I can um, and, you know, kind of just show them that, that I'm a part of the community. And I liked what you said in, in, in your pod where you like, when people come ask me for a picture, I, I do it. Yeah. Because you know, you, your comment was more about karma that maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. down the line if he's run into, you know, the Joker or whatever you want to picture of him with it. But – Roy Williams, who Wayne and I both played for, used to always say to us, like, don't be upset when people want your autograph or want your picture with them. It's better than being ignored. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I always took that. Right, and I'm not a retired Jersey. I was pretty much a nobody. But when you're at Kansas, your, your, your status is just you're a Kansas basketball yep. player. You are the, the king of the city. Yep. Yeah, one thing in the, the, the campus community that has a lot of buzz alongside with our, our basketball team is our football program. Yeah. I know that uh, that's something that you've got some high exposure to in terms of seeing it done at a high level uh, coming from Michigan. Uh, that's something that we're building towards uh, in that direction uh, here at Kansas. So are you, you a football fan, and, and what do you think your interaction and interest will be like with Kansas football this year? I'm, I'm a big football fan. Um, I, I think the people of Kansas will be – I'm upset to hear that I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask about that. I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan. Like, I, I honestly, like, in the Why? fall. Because my, my parents are from Buffalo. Oh, and so, okay. you know, they, my dad. That's acceptable. That's, that's acceptable. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. so I kind of got ingrained <laughs> into it from, from an early age. And so, you know, I, um, you know the, my, my falls are kind of deter- – my whole week is kind of determined by how the Bills do. But yeah, I'm a huge football fan, and going to a school like Michigan, I mean, the – the football love they have, you know, for the team is just crazy. Like, it felt like everybody planned their whole year around those kind of like six or seven weeks they had at, for home games. Um, and so I'm super excited, you know, to experience that here at Kansas. Um, I, I feel like, you know, the program is really building. Um, I know last year they took a, a huge step forward in the right direction. And so I think um, I was just talking to one of the players, Kenny, uh, last night. And so they, they're bringing back a lot of the team and, and hopefully, you know, they'll have – same success and even um, build on, on what they did last year. So I also heard you, you obviously love Josh Allen. Yeah. But you were at the Kentucky Derby <laughs> and you ran into Mahomes. Yeah. And, and you said, I want to hate this guy, but I like him. <laughs> and it, it a parallel I can draw is I've taken Coach Self to my club in Kansas City and play golf. And I'm going to a club that has a lot of Missouri guys and a lot of K-State guys. And they'll come up to me and they go, I just met your boy and I wanted to hate him. But I really like him. Yeah, kind of similar about Mahomes. You wanted to find something because you're a Josh Allen guy. Yeah, no. So I, Josh was actually at the Derby, and I met him there too. And I mean, Josh is obviously a great guy too. But yeah, no. When I when I um, walked past Mahomes, you know, I felt like you know, I'd, I'd be cheating on the Buffalo Bills if I said what's up. But you know, <laughs> now, now that now that I'm now that I'm in, in Lawrence, Kansas, I feel like I I got to make that relationship with him. Um, but yeah, no, like 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 you said. Um, I really did not want to like him, but he's just such a cool guy, man. He was so, like, open and just down to earth. And, you know, he said he, he's, he comes to games. And so I'm all excited. I'll be excited to see him there, uh, you know, front row when we play. And, and similar comparison when you said, you know, Allen Fieldhouse is ridiculous. Arrowhead. You think the Bills stadium's good, good atmosphere? Wait till you go to Arrowhead. I, I, I don't know about Would that. You? I, think, I think the Bills Mafia is the I think we game. might. We might. No, yeah, you, we'll yeah, oh, yeah, you, yeah, guys, yeah. you guys definitely play. We it, we come we come here. We'll, we'll, we'll win again. This all right, year. we'll get you to that game. We'll win again this you, year. He's gonna wear a Bills jersey though. Yeah. You, oh, I already have my Josh Allen want, jersey in my room. It's hanging that up. means we're gonna have okay. to run security. Man. I, yeah, I got my yeah. Josh Allen color rush you jersey. Want it's red like though. You. It's red. It's not like blue or anything. So I might fit in a little bit. Well, but. okay. If you wear a red Bills jersey to Arrowhead, that's a, that's a acceptable, right? He's got what? Can we, we allow him to do that? Where I'm, I'm gonna have to try to get in a suite or something. I yeah, got. I can't. Yeah, be, we'll I can't be general admission. We, can, yeah. we can handle that. Well, Hunter, it's thank I'll have you. Wayne. I'll, I'll have yeah, Wayne he's your bodyguard. Yeah, security. <laughs> yeah. with the, or just yeah. get your brothers yeah. here. Just go with your family. <laughs> oh, Nobody's yeah. gonna mess with that massive family. I have no doubt. No but, doubt. Uh, man, we're we're just so excited to have you here. Uh, I know you're you're excited to play for Bill and. 
And so you've seen the recruiting side of Bill. Hey, you're the best. What do you think it's going to be like that that first day? And how the good thing about you is you've played for three years. You get it. You know how to play hard. You know how to play tough. You're not a freshman. So I think the learning curve is going to be minimal because Wayne and I talk about it all the time with a Remy, Remy Martin or a Kevin McCuller. When you get that transfer, it's kind of a plug and play yeah. deal. But you're still going to see, as you know, guys, they recruit you differently than they coach oh, you. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And, and you yeah. know that. Yeah. And you, you can take a punch. Yeah, no, I mean, my AU coach, Keith Stevens, was, was, was one of the hardest talk coaches. Talk about there. your AU team on how stacked that AAU team was. Yeah, no, the starting lineup was Duke, North Carolina. Villanova, North Carolina, Michigan, well, now Kansas. But, yeah, that was the starting lineup. Baycott. Um, yep. Baycott, Did Roach. you play with David McCormick at some point, too? No, no, no. I never played with Team Loaded. Okay. Um, but, you know, so that team was loaded. But playing with Keith Stevens, um, you know, he's, he's – I'd say he's on the, the meaner side of, yeah. of, of coaches. But, like, I mean, I love him. But I think he really prepared me for college. Um, I think a lot of people don't know this, but Coach Self actually uh, coached me when I tried out for USA Basketball U19 – um, he did cut me, which which created a little bit of animosity. I will say, when I first was getting recruited by Can- like when I first went to Michigan, I was hoping that I played Kansas because I feel like I'd have a chip in my shoulder. But um, now that you know it's come full circle, uh, I still want an apology from him. But, but it's I'll, get like the, I'll get over it. I'll get over it. It's kind of like the '84 draft and Michael Jordan, Sam Bowie. Who did they take for you to get cut? And have you followed that guy? Or do you even know? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I know exactly who it is. And, I, yeah, I followed him. What kind of career? I, I, I don't no, want to throw. say a name, but what kind of career did that I, have? I don't want to throw, like, a little. I don't want to give him, like, like some shade, but he, he's, he wasn't good. Bro. I'm, I'm sorry. He wasn't good. He, <laughs> he played at Texas, and then he'll play at Texas. Ah, damn, I hope he doesn't see it. But, no. But, no, nah, I mean, he made a mistake. He made a mistake. Made okay, that's no, good. Yeah. I, I think we all like I don't want, I don't want to give him, like, any shade, or I don't want him catching any straight yeah, bullets. No, 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 no. But, no. I mean. If, if it was off here, I'd tell you exactly who it was. But we'll talk off camera. But it, I, I know we all love it when guys play with a little chip on your shoulder. And, yeah. and it's a little different when you're playing on a chip on your shoulder with your head coach. We want you to we want you to <laughs> play Take with that energy no, that, out there. Hey, Like I said, I, I'm going to yes. ask for an apology at some point, and then I'll get over it. I, I'm, I'm quick to forgive. They'll give you an apology. So when we play Kentucky and Chicago, you go get 25 and 20, I think you'll get an apology. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, well, well, well uh, Michigan played Kentucky last year in London. And we lost, so that's I, that's a little revenge game for me. So I got a couple of revenge games oh, on the man, schedule. I like it. There's some, game, there's some games on the schedule. I got doubly circled with all that <laughs> Big Perfect. Ten and chips and all that stuff. I like it. For sure. Perfect. Well, I think that'll do it, man. I appreciate your time. Looking forward to a great year and really – could be two years, right? I mean, we didn't really it's possible. We didn't really broach that subject, but you you do have two years of eligibility left. In your mind, I'm sure you have a goal of what you want to accomplish. Uh, is it a one year plan? Is it a two year plan? Or is it kind of both? Um, I mean, I, yeah, this came up in another interview. Uh, I did say it was always like I, I said this after my um, coming back of my freshman year that was, that that was going to be my last year and. Here I am, a senior. Yeah. So I feel like you know whatever I say, I can't hold my hold myself to. But um, I think you know, Coach Self has a good plan for me. Um, we're gonna try to develop as much as we can, try to win as many games as we can together, kind of to see where it goes from there. All right. Well, this has been the Jayhawker Podcast, brought to you by the University of Kansas Health System, Black and Veatch, and the President Hotel downtown Kansas City. Call Philip Stranod for a little stay and play, Power and Light District summer concert tour. Kansas will be at the Big 12 again, staying at the President Hotel. So call up our man, Phil. But Hunter, appreciate you at Rock Chalk. Big fella. So excited to have you. Southsider, thank you. This is the Jacker Podcast, Rock Chalk.